If you're into real fieldcraft, wartime engineering, and the survival logic of people who didn't have the luxury of failure, then this is one of those stories worth slowing down for. Because the Soviet one-brick stove isn't just another clever hack from the Eastern Front. It's one of those brutally simple, battlefield-tested solutions that shows exactly how armies solved a problem when they had nothing. No fuel convoys, no spare parts, no time, and men freezing in dugouts that routinely dipped far below zero. Before we get into the mechanics, understand this. This method wasn't theory. It was used by frontline engineers, partisans, and bunker builders who needed heat right now, or they wouldn't last the night. When you learn how they pulled it off, you'll see why this tiny heater deserves its odd reputation. A single brick used the right way could radiate hours of usable warmth, and more importantly, it teaches principles of heat retention and fuel economy that any modern survivalist can still use today. So let's dig into the story behind it, how it worked, why it worked, and how you can apply the same logic in real-world survival setups today. The origins of the brick heater come from soldiers who needed heat with almost no fuel. The Soviet military always struggled with heating remote positions. Many bunkers and forward posts sat deep in forests, marshes, and frozen plains where supply trucks couldn't reach for weeks. Firewood was often snow-soaked and anything that burned quickly meant more smoke, more chopping, and, well, more exposure. The solution they created wasn't actually the brick itself. It was the thermal principle behind using a dense mass to absorb and slowly release heat. The one brick heater became shorthand in Red Army field manuals describing how to use a preheated brick as a slow, radiating heat source. Soldiers would heat a brick directly in a tiny, improvised stove, a metal ammo box, or even a trench cooker until it was deeply hot. Once removed and wrapped lightly in cloth or set on a metal plate, the brick would radiate constant heat inside the bunker. It wasn't enough to turn the place into a sauna, but it raised interior temperatures enough to prevent frostbite, keep rations thawed, and allow men to function. That was its purpose. Survivable warmth, not comfort. The key to the brick stove's success lies in thermal mass and controlled burning. This method worked because a brick, especially an older clay or ceramic Soviet brick, holds heat extremely well. Instead of wasting fuel feeding an open flame all night, soldiers focused on loading a quick high-energy burn into that brick. A small fire could be fed with twigs, paper, or tiny scraps of wood, which was crucial during shortages. After 10 to 15 minutes in direct flame, the brick became a compact heat battery. The heat it radiated wasn't overwhelming, but it was steady. In a closed bunker or earthen dugout, that slow radiation added up. Temperatures could climb several degrees, which might not sound like much, but in subarctic conditions, that difference meant warmer hands, protected feet, and fewer cases of trench foot and hypothermia. Modern survivalists can, you know, use the same principle. Heating a brick beside a campfire and placing it inside a tent safely, of course, on a plate or double cloth, creates hours of dry, radiant warmth, all without the need to maintain a full fire. 
This really matters in fuel-scarce environments, stealth situations, or just anywhere you don't want your fire burning openly all night. Soldiers, in fact, use simple rugged steps to turn one brick into hours of heat. Field manuals didn't romanticize it. The steps were blunt and practical. First, find a solid clay brick with no cracks. Second, heat it aggressively in a small stove or firebox until it's almost too hot to handle with gloves. Third, place it on a metal can lid, a spare mess pan, or even a flat rock, just to prevent scorching your bedding material. Fourth, position it near the centre of the dugout or at the foot of a sleeping platform. This method allowed every man in a small bunker to benefit from the slow radiation. You can, uh, recreate this in a civilian setting. For example, if you're camping in cold weather and want to conserve fuel, heat two or three bricks or stones at the end of your fire session, transfer them safely and let them radiate through the night. You reduce fire risk, save wood, and maintain warmth in a controlled, quiet way. It follows the exact logic the Soviets used. Let the fire burn when you're awake and let the stored heat take over when you're not. The one-brick method also solved one of the biggest wartime threats carbon monoxide build-up. One reason the Soviets favoured this approach was the safety factor. Bunkers with poor ventilation killed soldiers every winter through carbon monoxide poisoning. Even small stoves produced deadly fumes if chimneys froze or, you know, draft conditions shifted. The one-brick method only required a short burn window. Once the brick was charged with heat, soldiers would go ahead and extinguish the fire entirely. With no ongoing combustion, the bunker stayed warm without any gas build-up. For survivalists today, this is honestly a critical lesson. Many tent and shelter fires go wrong because people try to run a heat source in a confined space. A heated brick gives you warmth without flame, smoke or gas, which means you can seal the shelter more tightly and, well, stay safer through the night. The brick heater teaches modern survivalists to think in terms of efficiency, not brute force. What made this Soviet trick so effective wasn't magic. It was discipline. Instead of endlessly feeding a fire to fight the cold, they invested a short burst of heat into a durable mass. That mindset carries over to modern preparedness. Whether you're heating a small cabin, a vehicle shelter, or even a winter tent, thinking in terms of thermal mass makes your setup more efficient. For example, lining the inside of a snow shelter with heated stones, warming a clay pot beside a fire before sleeping, or even placing a hot brick under a chair in a power outage all follow the same logic. You're creating warmth that doesn't rely on a continuous feed of fuel. This simple Soviet idea remains one of the smartest survival heating tactics ever invented. Eighty years later, this tiny heater still outperforms many complex survival gadgets. It doesn't need batteries, it doesn't jam, and it doesn't reveal your position with smoke. It's small-scale, quiet, and reliable. Exactly what soldiers needed, and exactly what anyone preparing for harsh conditions should understand. It proves that sometimes the simplest wartime inventions deliver the most timeless solutions. If you found this breakdown valuable, make sure you subscribe. Share this video with someone who appreciates real history and real survival knowledge. 
and keep exploring the forgotten skills that kept people alive when everything was stacked against them.